all of your goodness, all of the great and mighty works that you have done from the very beginning up to today. That's why we can say, oh God, we are standing on the rock. Rain may go down, floods may come in, oh Lord, but Lord, we are still here because of your grace, because of your mercy. And Lord, we remember your words. The very first words that you have given to your people, Israel. In that desert of God, when you said those words, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Shema Lighthouse, Shema, listen and obey. The Lord your God, the Lord is one. Lord, this is our year of wholeness and you are calling us to be whole. So, Lord, we humble ourselves today. And we remember those words, Shema. Listen and obey. May you forgive us, God, if we have been listening to voices, if we have been listening to the influence of this world and not your words of life, Lord. If we are just listening and not putting it into action. He said, Shema, listen and obey, Lighthouse. The Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And Lord, that's what we are doing today, oh God. That's what we choose to do. We want to listen to you, but not just listen. We want to obey. We want it to put into action, Lord God, our love for you. Because if there is someone who has displayed this great love, not just by words, but by action too, it is you, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. When you left your throne and you died on that cross, oh God, those are words in action saying, I love you, my son. I love you, my daughter. That's why, oh God, we come as a community, oh Lord, and we humble ourselves. Teach us as well to love you, Lord God, by listening and by obeying to your words. And as we do that, Lord, we also lift up, Lord, our petitions, our cries, as we fix our eyes unto you as we have been declaring this morning you are sufficient you are El Shaddai you are sufficient for all our needs oh God and every children of yours that are free today by your son by your blood Lord may we find ourselves this morning overflowing just overflowing let our cups just overflow as your word says in Psalms 23, O oh God, I will fill your cup, my son. I will fill your cup, my daughter, and you will just overflow. We receive that today, O oh Lord. You are sufficient. You are everything that we need in our sickness, in our lack, whatever we are going through, O oh Lord. You are all. You are all in all. You are the great I am. Come on, church. Lift up your hands and give Him praise. Why don't you open your mouth? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We are excited. Continue to speak to us. Continue to mold our hearts, Lord God. May we come out of this place as we hear your words later through the preaching of your word. Change, challenge, O oh Lord, so that we can become more like your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, before you sit down, why don't you greet someone, 10, 15, 20 people. Lighthouse, this is a safe place. May you greet them in the love of the Lord. Thank you, Levites, for leading us into worship. Hallelujah.
Amen. Wow. Can you just say to the nearest person beside you, just say, it is good to be in the house of the Lord today. I am glad to worship the Lord with you. Hallelujah. Good morning, Lighthouse. I would like just to welcome anyone in here, and this is your first time. This is your first time here in Lighthouse Christian Community Alabang. We don't want to embarrass you. We just wanted to honor your presence so that we can know you. So may I ask anyone from these two aisles, just stand up so our ushers, our elders, and pastors can greet you. Meron po ba dito? This is your first time. Please stand up. Do not be shy. Welcome po, kapatid. Welcome po. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How about in these two sections? Anyone who's uh, here for the very first time, meron po ba tayong kapatid? Dito na ngayon lang, first time here at Lighthouse Christian Community Alabang. Anyone? Hello po. Tumataas po ba kayo ng kamay? O uh, inyo pong anak ang nagtataas sa kamay? Okay. Hallelujah. Can we just pray for our brother over here? Brother RJ, can you just uh, stand beside our brother? Okay lang po ba kapatid na ipagdasal ka namin? Salamat Panginoon, napakabuti ninyo. Dinalan niyo po ang aming kapatid, Panginoon, dahil you have a purpose, O oh God. And we just pray that our brother and our friend today will experience only you, Jesus. Everything that we, he will hear, everything that he will experience in the next minutes and hours, let it be your glory, O oh Lord. For it is only you who can change and save lives, O oh God. So we bless our brother and we welcome him in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. My name is Pastor Carlo. I'm one of the pastors here. Now, if you are wondering, bakit ganun ang boses ni Pastor? But parang, parang nag-praise and worship na sa this morning. <laughs> Actually, I did also at home with my eight months old baby and 10 kilos. Imagine that. <laughs> but also last night, we had our new gen United worship. We invited all the South Metro regions, City Gate. We also have a guest from Springfield Church. And we were like, I can't count. But what we did last night, we took off the chairs so that all of us can dance and shout and give glory to our king because he deserves it, right? So just imagine a lot of young people in here jumping and dancing. Imagine me, Brother RJ, with this kind of weight, <laughs> that bod, I am jumping. I just said, Lord, you gave your all. You gave your all to the cross. I want to give my all tonight. So I started to jump. But the word of God is true, mga kapatid. The spirit is willing, but the belly is not. <laughs> my knees are aching and just my arms are just aching, but it is worth it. Diba? Di po ba? Kahit pagod ang ating katawan, basta magsasamba tayo sa Panginoon, it is worth it, right? Amen? Hallelujah. So, as you prepare your tithes and offering, I wanted to give you a very... Uh, you know, small illustration, a visual illustration about the kingdom of God, about giving. So let me bring you back to your memory of the story of Elijah in 1 Kings. Have you remember the story of Elijah? There was drought in the kingdom, right? And the only resources of food and water that Elijah can get is on that brook and from the food that the crows bring. But there are moments in our life when the brook dries up and the crows start coming. <laughs> Stops coming, I mean, right? Nakaka-relate ba kayo? Nararamdaman natin yun sa buhay natin, right? And then God told Elijah, from this day on, I want you to travel to the land called Zarephath. There is a widow there. 
And that widow, when Elijah uh, saw her, I can just imagine the face of Elijah. I thought, Lord, you're going to bring me to a place where there is full of provisions. You know why? Because this widow is already picking up sticks. Panggatong. And when Elijah asked her, do you have food? The widow said, you know what, my master? I only have a handful of flour and a few drops of oil. This is our last meal. And tomorrow, we're up ready to go to die. Nararamdaman mo niyo ba yun? Nakaka-relate kayo? Nakaka-relate kayo, mga kapatid? Yung season sa buhay natin na kakapiranggot na lang. Di ba? Kakapiranggot na lang ang meron ka. Saktong-sakto na lang. But the Lord is asking you to give. Now, human nature will tell us every time, you know, when, when things are getting tough, right? When the road, when the rubber meets the road and it's getting tough, it's always in our mind or in our hearts, self-preservation. I will try to hold it. That's why every time God would bless us and we go to that season of, you know, difficulties and the Lord is calling us to give just like that woman I want you to give, even though that's the only thing that you have right now. And just exact for you and your son for today. But I want you to give. Oh, I can just feel that woman's heartbeat. Magbibigay ba ako, Lord? Ibubuhos ko ba? Will, will I give? But this is only what I have. This is us every time we try to, you know, do our own thing. Self-preservation, survival mode. We don't want to let go of what God is asking us, especially when you only have just a handful. Well, it looks healthy, it looks nice, but it's not life-giving. It's stagnant. And when water is stagnant, it's very dangerous, right? The Lord is asking us to give, to pour. Do not be afraid. You know why? Because the Word of God says, every time you give, I'll give it back to you. I'll pour again. That's kingdom principle number one. Do not be afraid, lighthouse. Every time you are in a season where you can honestly say, Lord, I just have a handful. I am survival mode right now. And when I say giving, I'm not just say, talking about giving financially. But every time the Lord asks us, especially that big word, time. I want you to give your time. Minister to that brother. But Lord, I'm tired. It's so inconvenient for me right now. Do not be afraid. Dahil hindi po tayo makukulangan. The Lord will always pour unto us. When you give. God says, I will give it back to you. Second principle, and I'll end here. In the kingdom of God, hoarding is boring. Can everybody say that? Hoarding is boring. <laughs> so do not hoard. Do not keep it. Pour it. Pour it unto the Lord. Pour it unto others. Why? Because he's going to give it back to you in full measure. Until you exercise this in your life, and this is now a lifestyle of worship. You know what happens? This happens to your life. You are overflowing. You are overflowing. So do not be afraid to give whatever the Lord is asking you. Time, money, influence, give it. Do not be afraid that you will lose something. The Lord will give it back to you. And the more you do that, you will find yourself, Shema, listening and obeying 
to the words of God, and now you find yourself just overflowing. Do you want that in your life? Do you want to overflow so that you can give more and receive more from the Lord? Amen. Let us all stand up and let's lift up our tithes, our offering to our King. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Truly, you are great. You are El Shaddai. You are sufficient for all our needs. But today, oh God, we stand. And not just some of us, but most of us, you know it. For most of us, Lord, this is all that we have. But Lord, we choose today to obey you. We choose to say, oh God, Lord, I will still worship you with this handful of flour and oil. For I know you will not just replenish it. So that we can just have more than enough. But Lord, there will come a time that you will just pour down your blessing. And that we will overflow. That it's not just our families, Lord God, that we are pouring into. But even, Lord God, beyond the circle of our family, our friends, our church community, oh God. And anyone who doesn't know you or who is not part of the kingdom of God. Lord, we want to overflow, O oh Lord. So as we march down in this aisle, Lord, we will drop, Lord God, our tithes and offering with joy in our hearts. Not worry, Lord God, but worship to our King. We love you and we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us give to the Lord.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, so many beautiful people here today. Paki high five nga po mga katabi ninyo. Just let them know how good looking they are and how happy you are to see them in the house of the Lord. I'm just scanning through the crowd right now. And so many beautiful faces. The the kids shirts, by the way, are our, our ministers are ready to receive our children. Many of them have gone up already, but just in case your kids are still with you, our kids' church teachers are now waiting for you. Let us appreciate our uh, kids' ministry. And again, let's give a round of applause for our Levites for the great ministry that they do Sunday after Sunday, bringing us into the very throne room of the Lord. Number one, LNS, Lighthouse National Summit. We used to have this before the pandemic, but this is the very first time after almost three years that we're going to gather together. So November 17, 18, and 19, to the elders, the minister heads, the pastors and the staff, please be part of this. And should you want to sponsor any of our region's churches, because they have so many leaders wanting to come to Manila, all the way from Dumaguete and Bicol and Isabela and Tugigarao and Pangasinan. Just to be with us in the LNS, feel free to approach us or in the next coming Sundays, uh, make it part of your giving. Just put in there in your tithes envelope for LNS. Your investment will surely go a long, long way. Ladies and gentlemen, can you look up? Malapit na pong matapos ang ating kiss sa may mga kaibigan. Palapakan natin si Lord, mga kapatid. It's been uh, less than three weeks and yet uh, the work has been done so fast. And don't worry po, somebody suggested na sana maglagay tayo ng net. We wanted to do that but it would be very, very costly and at the same time logistics kasi matatakpan yung, yung ating lights. But our contractors have assured us na wala pong malalaglag dyan, mga kapatid dahil... Uh, Hindi lamang yan naka-rivet, it's screwed, naka-screw po yan sa pinaglalagyan niya. So kahit anong sayawan at talunan natin dito, wala pong danger na meron laglagan dito sa ating sanctuary. If you would like to support, again, this project, I don't raise funds here, but should you be moved by the Lord and you just want to say, Lord, I want to be part of this, the beautification and the facelift of the sanctuary of the Lord, this is another cause that you can always give to. Hopefully, in about two weeks from now, our elevator project can also commence, ladies and gentlemen. So that our uh, senior citizens, our uh, people with disabilities, even those in wheelchairs, everyone will have uh, enough motivation to come to church. Kasi hindi na po masakit sa tuhod ang pag sa church. Pag na ang ating elevator. Just give praise to the Lord, Lighthouse. God is so good. So thank you, Pastor Carlo, for teaching us today the principle of the overflow. I've always believed if God can give through me, God will give more to me. That's the principle of overflow. If you want to experience that in your life, invest in kingdom activities. The returns will always far outweigh all the sacrifices that you have done. And it will always explode in your minds how God can richly provide to those that fully trust in Him. Today, to give us the Word of God, please give some love for Pastor June Ruba. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, Lighthouse family. Yan, kaya lang, feedback lang ako. Uh, sabi mo ngayon, katabi mo, you look good today. Yan. Huwag lang yung sa kanan, sa kaliwa. Kung di naiintindihan, tagalugin mo, mukha kang mabuti ngayon. Apo. <laughs> Kung di lang naman naiintindihan. Pero alam ko namang intelehente ang mga lighthouse people. Pa-adjust na lang po, please. Thank you. Amen. At ulitin ko lang po yung ating LNS na impact. Ngayon po ay nasa 300 na po ang nag-register. Please continue to intercede. Please continue to pray, to support. Alam niyo po kung bakit. 
Kasi pag kayo po ay pinagpala nyo ang isa o dalawang leader doon, daan-daan po ang mga pinagpapala nyo na naaabot nila. Ganun po yung impact na pwede nyong gawin sa panalangin, sa pagsuporta sa ating mga leaders, not just here in Alabang, kundi sa buong Pilipinas po. Amen? Amen. Uh, Bago po magsimula ng preaching, gusto ko po itong simulan sa wala pong judgment dito ha, walang condemnation. Opo. Pwede niyo pong pakita itong slide na to. Sino po yung nakaabot sa ganito? Sige po, yan. Yung ulitin ko po ah, there is no condemnation, there is no judgment. Opo, amen. <laughs> Opo, kaya, kaya ako sinimulan sa ganun para at least, uh, di ba, yung iba ata, hindi na, hindi, alam niyo ba yan? Sorry po, kayo na lang po dito Yan po ay typewriter Wow Or makinilya eh, Hindi ko na po nabutan yan Nabutan ko po yan Mga siguro 2 months old 2 months, two months. Mga 5 or 6 years old ako Doon sa kapitbahay namin So meron siyang ginagawa Nag-CR lang siya So ako naman bata Type-type yung pala Paper niya So ako naman Nagta-type-type ako doon Anong ginawa mo? Ibig sabihin pala But nagalit siya kasi eh, Patapos na yung isang band paper eh Uulitin niya yun Or meron siyang gagawin So Naabutan niyo po? Praise God, praise God. At salamat sa Panginoon dahil nag-improve ang buhay. Tama? Nagiging convenient tayo. Yang, na, yang sa, ano ko ba to? Kaliwa, kanan. Sorry. Uh, ito, ito, ito. Yan po ay computer. Uh, nag-improve naman. Pero bago ka makapag-computer, kailangan mong bumuo ng studio para doon sa buong computer na yun. Praise God at meron na tayong... Laptops, meron na tayong CPU, kahit isang table lang, no? Very convenient ang buhay. Sino po'y natutuwa na convenient na ang mga bagay-bagay? Tama? Dati po, pag kayo ay nagpapadala ng pera, paano kayo nagpapadala ng pera? Sige nga, yung mga 90s, mga galing Saudi, paano kayo nagpapadala ng pera? Yung mga tito ko na nakamaong dito. Sorry, easy, easy, sorry. Oh. Okay, paano kayo nagpapadala ng sulat? Yung anak nyo, di ba? Sumulat, love, o kaya yung ano? Uh, airmail po. Apo, alam ko lang kasi email eh. Airmail, hindi ko na nabutan. Love, o kaya yung asawa mo, may sakit ang anak mo. Tapos, pag, dum- pag dumating na, pag eh, inom kayo ng gamot, mga dalawang buwan nakalipas, magaling na. Ganun po katagal. Pero ngayon, praise God at maganda na po ang, ang ating uh, communication. At ito pa po dati, pag ikaw ay nagugutom, talagang magpapalayok ka, maguuling ka, mag, magtatabas ka ng mga itak. Oh, itak, magtatabas ng itak. Magtatabas ka ng kahoy. Pero ngayon, punta ka lang dyan sa kahit anong mga convenience store. Kahit hindi healthy, pero kung gutom na, bili ka lang ng Monde. Oh, Monde ah, promotion. Monde, back in the Dyan lang kami nakatira ha. Yan. So, kahit sabi natin hindi healthy, pero in case of emergency, wag naman nating araw-arawin ano po. Pero convenient ang buhay, no? Lalong-lalo na po ngayon na ito ay naranasan natin ngayong pandemic, no? Pag tayo ay uh, walang cash na, meron naman tayong Gcash. Ah, nakita nyo. At ngayon po, pinapaganda natin itong ating building kasi gusto namin maging convenient kayo. Okay? Hindi po natin kaaway ang pagiging convenient. Okay? Gusto ko lang i-clear sa inyo ito mga kapatid. Kaya tayo nagpapalagay ng kisame, kaya magandang upuan nyo. Pwede naman tayo dito mag umupo na lang sa sahig. Pwede namang walang aircon. Pwede namang hindi na tayo magtayo ng escalator. Oh. Yung kasi yung balak eh, escalator talaga yung balak. Pwede naman nating hindi gawin yun, pero ginagawa natin yun para maging convenient, para maging conducive yung pagpupuri at pagsamba natin sa Panginoon. And there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Palakpakan natin ng Panginoon for any improvements. Kaya natin, dat, dati di ba yung sounds natin, tagdalawa lang yan. Ngayon, bilangin nyo, ilan na yan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, labing anim na speakers na yan. Para lang mapakinggan natin ng maigi ang salita ng Panginoon. However, ito na however. Ito mahirap sa however na to eh. Yan, that of what? So bahalit. In our spiritual life, being convenient is not always the case. 
Naniniwala ba? Naniniwala kayo mga kapatid. Kaya nga ang title natin ay Building Upon a Rock. Hindi Building Upon a Sand. Kasi convenient naman, very convenient na gumawa ng bahay sa, sa buhangin. Pero in our spiritual life, gusto po namin ituro sa inyo na ibibuild natin ito sa rock. That is why our title of the, the message for today is Commitment over Convenience. So, litin po natin. Commitment over Salamat po sa dalawa. <laughs> commitment over convenience. Bilang pagalang po sa salita ng Panginoon, tayo po ay tumayo. Tayo po ay nasa series, nasa Luke chapter 14 na po tayo ngayon. If you have your Bibles with you, I'll be reading from NIV version. And later po, some parts of the reading ay nasa Pinoy version po, New Testament. But from now, I'll be reading from NIV version. Sabi dito, large crowds were traveling with Jesus. In turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me, and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Opo, si Jesus po talaga yung nagsabi nito. 28. Suppose... One of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay have, for if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider? Whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000, if he is not able, he will send a delegation, while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, last verse, those of you who, did, who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Let us pray. Panginoon, as we listen to your word, we believe that it is timeless and at the same time, timely for each and every one of us. Kaya po patuloy na buksan niyo ang aming puso. Patuloy na buksan niyo ang aming mga isipan. And let your Holy Spirit, Lord, ang patuloy na manguna sa umagang ito. Be with us, Lord. Itago niyo po ako sa inyong likuran, Panginoon. Ito po ang aming panalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Makupo na po ang lahat. Ang nabasa po natin, yan po yung latter part na ng Luke chapter 14. And before I expound this, ay gusto po natin makita muna yung setup ng Luke chapter 14. Ngayon po, in this uh, journey na meron ng Panginoon, Jesus dito sa lupa, ito po ay kalagitnaan na ng kanyang, ng kanyang uh, ministeryo dito sa lupa. At nakakagay na siya ng traction, ng popularity. Ibig sabihin, marami nang sumusunod sa kanya Marami na siyang followers at marami na rin siyang bashers. Oh, modern kasi, modern. Yun, yun po talaga yun, marami na siyang bashers. At ang bashers na yun, alam niyo po kung sino? Pharisees. At gusto natin iset up muna itong kwento na ito sa verse 1. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a, of a prominent Pharisee, Hindi sinabi, it could be Simon, it could be anyone else. He was being carefully watched. Sa Tagalog, siya ay minamatyagan, binabantayan na maigi, at ano pa po, tinitingnan kung ano ang magagawa niyang mali. Nag, nag, na-invite na ba kayo sa bahay na ganyan? May nag-invite na ba sa'yo ng ganyan? Para ano pong, ano pong feeling? Buti yung mga Pinoy, hindi ganyan, no? Napaka-hospitable ng mga Pinoy. Wow. Napaka-wow, di ba? Kain ka, ulam pa namin yung buho kasi. Napaka- <laughs> At sabi ko nga, Lord, kung kami po, kasi 2,000 years ago na yun eh, 
Hindi po ako nakapag-prepare ng, ng script ngayon no, para sa ating uh, orality. Pero sabi ko, Lord, kung ito ay papanoorin namin bilang pelikula ngayong 2022. Wow. Ano kaya ang mangyayari? Kaya ako po ay nag, nag-hire na lang ng mga Pharisees. Ah, may mga nakita ko dyan eh. <laughs> Pero naglambing ako kay Jesus. Sabi ko, Jesus, okay lang ba kitang kuning artista? Ah, paano lang, lambing lang. Lord, sige na po, para ngayong Sunday lang. Parang may narinig ako. Sabi, anak, wala namang problema. Basta kukunin din kita. <laughs> Lord, di na mabiro. Kukuha na lang ako ng iba. So bilang pagpapakita sa panahon natin ngayon, kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng mga nagmamatyag kay Jesus, let us watch this video. Yan. Kunwari si Jesus lang yan, ha? kunwari lang. Yan. Tapos yan yung mga Pharisees na aking hinayar. You know, tingnan, tingnan nyo yung mga mukha, tingnan nyo yung mga itsura. Nakakote na pala si Jesus noon. Yan, kita nyo talaga. Yan. Yan o, talaga. <laughs> Lights on. So kung, kung ating, ga, tingin nyo, ganun ba yung mga itsura? It could be o, na OA, exaggerated, pero pwedeng ganun. Kaya tingnan nyo yung mga itsura ng mga yan. Yan yung carefully watch. Yan yung talagang nagmamatyag. Dahil nung panahon na yun, si Jesus, threat na sa kanila. Threat na sa religious system, threat na sa political system, threat na dun sa lahat ng ginagawa ng mga preseyo. Kaya ganyan at ganyan yung itsura nila. Kaya dito, Luke 14 verse 1 hanggang matapos na po ang Luke chapter 28. Maraming kwento. Pag magsisimula ang chapters, ganyan lagi. It's either binabantayan, it's either merong magmamarites o nandun si Jesus sa sunod na chapter kasama yung mga tax collector, kasama yung mga sinners. O nandun si Jesus kasama si Zacchaeus. Lagi na pong may ganyan mga kapatid. At dito, sa bahay na ito, sa, kwen- sa setting na ito, merong tatlong kwento at yun muna ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon before we go dun sa nabasa natin kanina. Unang kwento, ito po. Uh, story one, yung healing on the Sabbath. Story number two, uh, guests picking their places of honor at the table. And story number three, invitation at the banquet. Ito po yung unang kwento, no? Healing on the Sabbath. Bawal po yan, ha, sa panahon nila. For the Pharisees, pag literal ang Sabbath sa kanila, literal, bawal kang pumindot ng yung buton ng elevator. Ganun sila ka kadesidido. For them, it was a privilege of rest. Talagang, ano na namin to, very convenient kami. Pag Sabbath day, literal, walang gagalaw. Kaya yung ginagawa ni Jesus, very radical. Kaya nung, hindi, panoorin na lang natin. Ano? Sige, panoorin na lang natin. Okay lang? Tingnan natin kung paano ginawa. Okay lang ba? Yes. Panoorin na lang natin. No? Let's watch this video. Yan, at may dumating na Lalaki ito, sabi sa Bible ito, namamaga ang binti at braso. Kumuha talaga ako ng artista na namamaga yung binti at braso para maging makatotohanan po talaga. Yan, namamaga daw talaga yan. At syempre si Jesus, out of compassion, hindi mo na kinausap yung mga Pharisees at anong ginawa? Pinagaling ang lalaki na namamaga ang braso at binti. Yan. Sige. Gumaling po yan. Hindi lang po halata. Gumaling yan. Mag- magsisigaw, magsisigaw yan, o. Oh. O, oh, yan. Oh. Tatalo niyan. Yan, o. Oh. You know, praise God daw. Praise God, din lang narinig. Eto na! Yung mga parisis, eto na yun! Eto, di ba, tinuro pa kayo? Eto na yun! Maling-mali ang ginawa ni Jesus. May paglalagyan talaga tong si Jesus na to talaga ito ay nasermunan mali ba ang ginawa ko sabi ni Jesus kung kayo 
merong anak, meron kayong alagang asno o ox na, na, na nasa bingit na ng kamatayan during Sabbath, hindi nyo ba sila ililigtas? Na naser mo ng tuloy. Kita nyo? O yan, na, napayo ko. Yan po ang sinabi talaga sa Luke 14 verse uh, 2 to 7. Kaya kita nyo, it's our time. So nakita nyo po yung progression. Una yung nagmamatsyag. Yung pangalawa, malina. Meron na tayong trending na to. So kung merong video, kung merong viral, malamang yung ginawa ni Jesus, hindi po makikita yung kabutihan o, ka, o yung pagpapagaling niya. Kung ikaw ay pariseyo, ano makikita mo? Hindi nyo alam kasi hindi naman kayo pariseyo eh. So maganda yun mga kapatid. Ang makikita mo lang yung Sabbath day, nagpagaling, yun na yung pinaka-caption mo. Bawal na bawal yan. At mga nag-comment na, di ba? Pero, kita nyo po yung heart of the law. Kung kayo nga naman may anak, o kung kayo nga naman mayroong alagang uh, hayop na nandun na sa bingit ng kamatayan, at during Sabbath, anong gagawin nyo? O Sabbath day, hindi ako pwedeng gumalap. Pasensya ka na anak. Gagawa na lang kami ni mama mo. Ganun po sila ka-literal, ganun sila ka-legalistic sa kanilang mga batas. For them, that was very inconvenient. Sa mga Pharisees, ano po? Yung ginagawa ni Jesus, very inconvenient sa kanila. Pero muli, binubuksan ng Panginoon ang kanilang mga mata. Masyado kayong legalistic. Tingnan nyo yung puso ng Sabbath. Pangalawa po ang kwento. Ito naman, uh, ito yung parang nagtutulakan sila. O, hindi, dito tayo, dito tayo. Kwento ko na lang ulit na, okay lang? Okay lang? Kwento ko na lang ulit. Sige. Let's watch this video. Yan. For them, kailangan nandun sila sa malapit, doon sa pinaka kanto. Ano ba tawag doon? Ah... Uh, Ha? Oh, yun na yun. Yeah. Tapos nag-champion na, we are the champion daw. Siyempre, may sermon ulit. Pero dahil uh, wala na tayong budget para umaba, ang pinakasinabi na lang doon sa parabol, kung sino ang nagpapakumbaba, siya ang itataas, at kung sino ang nagmamataas, siya ang ibababa. Yun po. Palakpakan naman natin ang ating mga, ang ating mga, tawag dito, mga hired uh, actors at Shoutout po kay Victor Lozano. Kasi siya po talaga ang... Uh, ako lang po ang nag-direct kung anong gagawin, pero siya na talaga ang tumira niya. Kaya sabi ko napakagaling. Ito naman po, for yung kwento na number two, convenient naman talaga ang promotion. Tama. Pero ang mali dito, they were promoting themselves. Sila ang mismo nagpo-promote. Hindi, kailangan katabi ako ng ano. Pinaka dito ko, oh, hindi. Kahit nakakatapak na, kahit malinay ginagawa. So for them, it was inconvenient na nasermonan sila ng Panginoon. And last story po nating na uh, pag-usapan. Story number three, invitation at a banquet. At ang, for them, yung convenient, yung plenty of excuses. Madaling mag-excuse. Mga kapatid, dahil short na budget, hindi ko na po nagawa ng video. <laughs> Kwento ko na lang po sa Pinoy version. Ready po ba? Ito na po, parable of the invitation of, at the banquet. Sumagot si Jesus, may isang taong nag-prepare ng malaking handaan at nag-invite daw ng ano? Ng maraming? Nung oras na ng handaan, pinadala niya ang alipin niya para sabihin sa mga inimbitahan, pumunta na kayo! Yo! Yo! Sumagot. Ready na? Ready na? Ang lahat, hat, hat. Ah, di ba? However, however. Ngayon po, ang, ang interpretation ko dito, this is not the first invitation. Malamang, nag na sila. Ang ginawa na, na lang nung alipin ay FYI, for your information. Nag-confirm na tong mga to. Okay? Yan po ang context niyan. Nag-yes na sila doon sa invitation. 
Kumbaga, kasi dati naman wala namang email, wala namang text. So talagang very useful yung, yung pupunta. Okay na ha, o alas 8 ng gabi ha, o nag na kayo ha. Pero merong tatlong excuses na nangyari. At ano yung mga excuses na yon? Pero nagbigay sila ng iba't ibang mga excuse. Sinabi nung una, ah, pasensya na ha. Um, Siyempre, na ano yan, naranasan nyo na yun pag mag excuse kayo. Yung mukha nyo pa eh. Pasensya na ha. Uh, Di ba? Kunwari talagang, ano, ano. Kailangan kong puntahan at tingnan yung nabili kong lupa. Baka kasi mawala. Ah, wala, wala na yung sayang script. Sumagot naman yung isa, sabi naman ng isa, sorry, may binili akong, may binili kasi akong limang paris ng baka at susubukan ko sila sa bukid. Sinabi naman ng isa pa, bagong kasal ako, kaya hindi ako makakapunta. Seems legit, no? Ano po? Pero alam naman natin, nag-confirm na sila, nag-yes na sila, part na to ng schedule nila. And for them, convenient ang excuse na lang. Okay lang naman yun. Privilege of rest, promote, promote, promoting themselves, and plenty of excuses. That was the sin po doon sa Luke 14. For the Pharisees, for the Israelites. Actually, para sa kanila talaga yan. The invitation at the banquet. Kaya kung titingnan nyo, nagalit yung nag-invite. Sige, tawagin nyo kung sino yung mga nasa kalsada. At tayo ngayong mga hintil ay pinagpala ng Panginoon. Kasi yung utos, yung plano ng Panginoon para sa mga Israelita ay na-extend sa atin. Kudyo ka ba? Hindi, hintil tayo. At dahil sa grasya, mabuting kalooban ng Panginoon, tayo yung mga pilay, tayo yung mga bulag, tayo yung mga may sakit. No, I can't. Ako gusto ko sana i-preach to eh, pero next time mga kapatid. Tayo ngayon ang kasama doon sa great banquet ng ating Panginoon. Tayo mga tumanggap at nakakilala sa Kanya. Tayo mga, mga unang hindi naimbitahan. Alam mo ba yon? Hindi ka naman talaga unang naimbitahan. May tumanggi lang. <laughs> Salamat sa Lord may tumanggi. <laughs> Amen? Yun po yung setup, no? Yun po, eh, wait lang pa. Ano mo tubig? Now po, sabi ni Tito Martin, The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Kung kami pong mga pastor ay i-exhort namin na maging convenient ang inyong spiritual life, we are preaching the wrong gospel. Kung amin pong ipapadikdikan sa inyo na, na magkaroon kayo ng faith na talagang hyper o pag hindi kayo maman, hindi ka pinagpala ng Diyos na para bagang pera lang ang basihan ng pagpapala ng Panginoon. Yes, we rejoice kung sino yung mga napopromote. Yes, we rejoice kung sino yung mga talagang pinagpapala ng Panginoon. Pero if we preach yung gospel lang na yun, na kung sino yung mga mayayaman, kung sino yung mga may sakit, ay hindi kilala ang Panginoon. Kapatid, that wrong gospel yun. That's why we are here. Sinimula natin itong serye na to, na we must build our lights doon sa bato. At sino yung bato na yun? Si Kristo. Akala ng mga disipulo, punta na tayo, Pharisees, tapos na, nasermo na na, napagalita na. Akala ng mga disipulo o yung mga followers ni Kristo, ligtas na sila. Okay? Tulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, mayroon ng traction. Marami ng followers si Jesus. For the Pharisees, privilege press, promotion, plenty of excuses. This time, yung binasa po natin kanina, large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said. Large crowds. Siguro mga nasa tatlo. Yan. Tatlong daan, 250, walang sinabi. Ito pong sa literal na lingwahe, sa original word, uh, Greek. Ang turning po ay literal, hindi yung, uy, alam nyo ha, kayo ha, if you do not hate your mother, your father, you brush your teeth. Hindi, hindi, hindi ganun. Hindi ganun ang 
Ang pagkasabi nun, ang pagkasabi, turning to them, literal, stop. Huminto si Jesus. Because this time, ako ang magsiset ng standard. Jesus was saying to them, this time, I will set the term. Huminto talaga siya. At ang kanyang sinabi, yung mga nabasa natin kanina, at yung yun yung expound natin. For the crowds and for the disciples, tingin nila, yung pagsunod nila kay Jesus, popular, oh, sikat. Kung baga, oy, di ba? Kung baga, kung ikaw, di ba? May meron kang follow. Oy, oy, the Jesus, oh, Jesus, sama ko. <laughs> Picture kami, sempre kami, oh. Pwede namang maraming benefits. Kasi yung may, oh, may, may sakit yung tiyahin ko. Oh, kilala ko si Jesus. Ikaw, ag- ikaw agad ang number two na papagalingin. Or palakasan system. Which is, ganyan talaga ang mga nangyari. Kaya kung makikita nyo, in, sa mga parallel na mga na, na, na gospels, katulad nila Mark, nila Matthew, si Peter, sabi pa nga ni Peter, Jesus, huwag mo sabihin yan. Huwag mo sabihin mamamatay ka. Maling marketing yan. Huwag <laughs> yung ganyang marketing. Wala nang susunod sa atin. Tapos, Tatalon niya natin ang Rome. Babagsak ang Rome. Dapat ka no. Pero nang sabi ni, ni Lord, Jesus kay Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you do not have the things, for you have the things of this world. For them, following Jesus, ay katulad ng ganyan. Pero sila ay, quote-unquote, ng mga Gen Z, na real talk. Huminto talaga si Jesus. Okay mga kapatid, I will set the standard. I will set the term kung paano nyo ako susundan. Hindi dahil gusto nyo maging popular. Hindi dahil maraming benefits ang pagsunod sa akin. Hindi dahil para magpalakas kayo. This is the reality. Ika nga, the inconvenient truth of following Jesus. Handa na kayo mga kapatid? Meron naman akong dalawang minuto at tatlong oras pa. When we commit to build our life in Christ, meron dalawang bagay na dapat natin pagtuunan ng pansin. There should be a response. Dapat meron tayong pagtugon sa pagsunod natin sa Panginoon. Kapatid, praise God at andito tayo na nakikinig Sunday after Sunday ang buhay natin ay sinuko natin sa Panginoon. But this chapter is a good reminder for each and every one of us. Kanino natin binibuild? Kanino, na, kanino natin tinatayo ang ating buhay? Sa ating bang asawa? Sa ating pamilya? Sa ating ministeryo? O sa Panginoong Isus mismo? There should be a response. Luke 14, 27. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Kita nyo po yung ginawa ni, ni Jesus sa kanila. Hinto ko. Filter agad ang ginawa. Pagsasala agad ang ginawa. Kung sino man sa inyo, ang hindi kayang magbuhat ng krus at sumunod sa akin ay hindi ko magiging disciple. Take note, ang cross na sa kanila, ang cross sa kanila, it means humiliation, it means shame. Sa panahon natin ngayon, ang krus, forgiveness, freedom. Pero yung mga first uh, century, uh, I mean yung Jewish nung panahon na yon, lalo na yung nabubuhay sa, sa Roman era, Roman period, pag ikaw ay mayroong krus at ikaw ay nagbubuhat ng krus, ano ibig sabihin nun? You are a criminal, murderer. Kaya nung sinabi to ni Jesus, carry your cross. Willing ka bang mapahiya sa pagsunod sa akin? Willing ka bang sundan ako kahit yurak-yurakan ang pangalan mo? Willing ka bang sundan ako kahit ang dami mo nang pinagdadaanan, kahit hindi ka ma-promote-promote? 
Dahil sumusunod ka sa akin, are you willing to carry the cross? That was it, my friend. Hindi tayo, may cross ako, may cross ako dito. Yung carrying the cross na yon, it's more than that. Praise God at meron tayong symbol. Praise God at nadadala natin yung cross na yon bilang reminder kung gaano kabuti at katapat ang ating Panginoon. But each and every one of us, we should carry the cross if we want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And for the disciples, mga kapatid, ulitin ko, for the disciples, they literally carry the cross. At ano ang simbolo ng cross na yon? Ang kanilang buhay. We respond by carrying the cross. Kaya itong mga disciple na ito, yung kung nakikita nyo. Yung iba dyan, si Peter, pinako sa cross, pabaliktad. Si Matthew, ano, ano yung tagalong ng spear? Sinibat at hindi na makalakad. Pinugutan ng ulo, ginarote. Just for sharing the gospel. Kapatid ang prayer ko, Lord, huwag naman sana dito. Pero alam nyo ba, maraming mga kristyano, maraming mga sumusunod. Even this time, buhay nila ang nagiging kapalit. Buhay nila yung mismong krus nila sa pagsunod sa Panginoon. And this is a good reminder for each and every one of us. Ayaw lang natin, Lord, I want to be a convenient Christian. Kung meron man term na ganun. But I want to be a committed disciple of Jesus Christ. Nabubuhatin yung cross na yun. Whatever cross. Cross ng sakripisyo, cross ng problema, cross ng pagdurusa. Lord, I will follow you. Yan yung cross na gustong buhatin ng ating Panginoon. This week was very tough for us. Sa amin pong, uh, let, because we're a community, uh, let me just share this to you. Shoutout pala sa aking asawa na naka rest po ngayon. Two weeks ago, we found out that we were we are pregnant po. We are pregnant. Siyempre, bilang uh, ang tawag dito, Ganun, yung sa mga pelikula, hindi pala yun. Ah! Ah! Lala ko yun. Yung may ano ka pa, yung parang, totoo ba? Yung parang, yes, masaya ka, pero talaga, try natin ulit bukas. So, positive, 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 positive. So, kami, limang ano na to, ah. Limang PT. Puro positive. Positive. Last Sunday po, uh, nakita niyo po yung asawa ko dito, di ba? Kaso, hindi ko po na agad siya na-reply kasi ako po ay na-assign to preach sa Newport, no, anniversary nila. So, hindi ko po hawak ang phone ko. Nag-chat-chat siya. Sabi, ko, sabi niya, B, nag-bleed ako. So, sabi ko, kumusta ka? Si Doc siya ang nag pa doon sa bahay. Buti na lang po, malapit na lang po yung bahay namin. So, dyan na lang po kami. So, kahit pa paano, ay mad- may mga mag- uh, may, may madaling kung may mga ganong uh, emergency. Sabi ko, B, sige. Pakiramdaman mo, ano bang ano ba kailangan gawin? So sabi niya, sige, okay pa, tayo nga lang ako. Sumama pa ng strat plan kami nung, nung Sunday na yun. At, pero hindi pala uminto ang bleeding. Nagtuloy-tuloy pa rin yung, yung bleeding, no? At sa siyempre, kinakabahan na, hindi alam ko ano gagawin. In short, napapunta kami ng ER sa Silang. Nag-ER kami. Australia Medical Center. Ewan ko, nakalimutan ko. Basta yung unang ER. Ganun na siya ka-emergency. Ka At ang sabi ng, ng uh, OB through, uh, kasi nga, wala naman yung ano, ay mistreated, ah, sorry, threatened miscarriage or abortion. So, binigyan ng pampakapit, etc., etc. At kinabukasan po, Monday, um, umuwi kami dito habang nag-strat plan. Umuwi kami, pumunta kami na Asian pa ano kami consult doon sa sa uh, doktor etcetera binigyan ng gamot kasama namin si si Mama at si Ate Jen to help us at sabi pa ano na daw ultrasound so ultrasound mara komplik naging komplikado pa po mga bagay-bagay in short hindi nakita si baby agad 
So it could be, sabi ng doktor, early, masyado pang maaga, or yung worst na pwede mangyari is ectopic pregnancy. So binigyan ng gamot, nagpa-blood, pregnancy blood, o basta malaman yung, di ko alam yung mga term eh, para malaman kung gano'ng kaano yung dugo. Maintindahan na mga ano. So ngayon po, nakabedre siya ng one week. At actually, yung case ng misis ko ngayon, kahit nakabedre siya, may bleeding pa rin po. Minsan wala, minsan meron, miyak kami, lalo na siya umiyak. Salamat na lang po sa, meron ako mother in love, na kasi dahil bedre siya, nagpapadala ng mga ulam, at busog ang, ako, busog siya, busog din ako. <laughs> Salamat sa, sa Panginoon. At pag may pinagdadaanan ka pala, napapa-English ka, no? Sabi ko, you know what? We don't know what the future holds. But we know who holds the future. Ah. You guys, pala, no? Pag, pag may pinagdadaanan ko pala, no? Pero hindi pa po tapos, actually. Tomorrow, babalik pa kami. At kagabi, sabi ng doktor, So with all the the scenario, the complications, nagpa blood works na kami nung Thursday, etc. Nung gabi, ka, kagabi habang I was finalizing itong preaching na to. Tuloy pwedeng hindi matuloy yung pregnancy. Pwedeng Kami naman. Ako naman, s'yempre, di, di naman sa Jose. Eh. Ah, di naman sa Jose. Hintayin natin yung Monday. Doon natin. And Personally, ito yung cross na pinagdadaanan namin ngayon. At nangyari ito, during my time na ipipreach ko ito. <laughs> Sige ko, sure, doon nga, no? Kaya please do pray for us, mga kapatid. Hindi namin alam. Hindi namin alam kung matutuloy. Hindi pa namin alam kung anong mga, mga mangyayari pa sa mga... Lalo na sa kaisa. Please pray for her kasi medyo ano talaga yung ano niya ngayon. That was the cross. Hindi lang, hindi, hindi was eh. That is the cross na meron kami ngayon. The cross of uncertainty. The cross of, magkaka-baby ba? Mawawala ba si baby? But kailangan namin harapin yun mga kapatid. Kasi hindi tayo matuturing na disipulo ng ating Panginoong Yesus kung hindi tayo willing na magbuhat ng ating cross. Amen? Palakpakin, palakpakan natin si Lord sa kanyang kabutihan. Tomorrow po, 10 a.m., papultrasan kami. And we are preparing na, siyempre, good news. We are praying for good news, mga kapatid. Carrying. Pangalawa, pangalawang pagtugon na sinasabi ng Panginoon sa mga disipulo at sa atin ngayon, suppose one of you, wants to build a tower, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person to build and wasn't able to finish. And we respond by counting the cost. The first response, carrying the cross. The second response, we count the cost. Noon tayo ay sumunod sa Panginoon, noon tinanggap natin siya bilang personal na Diyos at tagapagligtas ng ating buhay para tayong mga anak ni Melay. Thank you, Mama! You know that I love chicken nuggets. Me too, Mama! Lord, thank you! You know that I love serving you. Nasabi pa na isang kasama mo sa discipleship group. Me too! Pero habang tumatagal... Lord, hirap. Kala ko madali maging kristyano. Ang sabi pa dun sa kenta, ang buhay ng kristyano ay masayang tunay. Inawit ko pa lang nung tinanggap kita. I have decided to follow Jesus. Ngayon, I'm undecided na po. That is why we need to count the cost. Hindi ganun kadali na sumunod sa Panginoon. Isipin niyo kung ang market ng Panginoong Isus. Rapid kayo. Isipin niyo ha, kung babaguhin natin yung mga yan. Don't carry the cross. You will be rich. Matatalo natin ang Rome. Matatalo natin si Caesar. Huwag kayong mag-alala. 
Yan yung good marketing. Tama? Pero nung sinabi ng Panginoon, I'm not here for good marketing. I'm here for the truth. Kasi ang pagsunod natin sa Panginoon, hindi dapat reactive, dapat reflective. And we reflect, Lord, if I follow you, ito po ang pwedeng mangyari. Yung mga under the table, mawawala na Panginoon. Yung mga ginagawa kong mga biso, if, kung gusto ko maging disipulo mo, paano po ito, Panginoon? Bibitawan ko po ba ito? Ganun dapat, reflective, hindi dahil, oh, tinanggap si oh, ako rin, tatanggap din ako. Kasi along the way, meron kang journey na kailangan pagdaanan and you really need to count the cost. We can say to you, hindi madali maging kristyano, sumunod ka lang sa Panginoon. That's not the case, my friend. Along the way, yung mga dati mong kaibigan, hindi mo na kaibigan. Takot nang lumapit sa'yo. Baka masunog daw sila. Tama? Ang tagal ng promotion mo, bakit? Hindi ka kasi nakikisama sa inuman. Hindi ka sumasama sa mga mali nilang gawa. Parte yon ng pagsunod sa Panginoon. Ang pag-iwas sa mga bagay na makamundo para sundan ang Panginoon. Hindi ka maging, kat- hindi ka maging top one. Hindi ka naman kasi nangungodig o. Ah. Kaya, kung ako nga, kung ipopromote ko to ah, kung isipin niyo para mga Avon o mga Dove ah, sinong nagsasabi na mahirap pa maging disciple ni Jesus Christ ha? Ah? I am 32 and I feel great. June Rupa, 32 years old. Pero, hindi pa tapos. O, oh, di ba? <laughs> Dito pa lang daw. <laughs> Pero mukha na 64 years old. <laughs> Pero with all seriousness, my friend, we really need to count the cost of following Jesus. Marami at marami talaga mawawala. Pero ito yung kagandahan. Sa pagsunod natin sa Panginoon, marami man ang nawala, maraming ibabalik ang Panginoon sa iyo. Never, ako po, nung sumunod ako sa Panginoon bilang magpastor. Panganay, wala na po ang aking nanay during that time. Ang tatay ko, galing lang sa major heart attack. And nandun na po ako sa last term, last sim na, ng aking pag-aaral sa Bible school. I can decide na, hindi, iiwanan ko na yan, dahil ako panganay, pero matindi po ang kabog ng banal na spirito sa akin. Tapusin mo yan. I will provide. I will take care of you. And until now, nakita niyo po ba ako nagutom? Until now po, hindi kami na malimos dahil pag ikaw ay tumalima, ikaw ay sumunod sa kalooban ng Diyos, never kanyang pababayaan. Ano man ang sabihin ng mundong ito, ano man ang mga negatibo na sasabihin ng mundong ito, pero if you really count the cost of following Jesus, mas matindi ang kanyang ibibigay sa mga sumusunod sa kanya. Ulitin ko, reflective. Pwede ba tayo mag-reflect, no? Sa mga... Sa sandaling ito, sa mga panahon ito. Are we really counting the cost of following Jesus? Para hindi pa natin tanggapin na yung mga dati mong buhay, yung mga dati mong ginagawa, ay talaga nga, Lord, no? Hindi ko na pala talaga dapat gawin yun. Let's reflect, mga kapatid. Pangalawang bagay po na when we commit to build our life in Christ, there should be a resolve. Una, there should be a response. At ano yung, ano yung pag, pag-responde natin? By carrying the cross and by counting the cost. Pangalawa, there should be a resolve. Ano po ibig sabihin ng resolve? Yung talagang tatayuan mo. Yung kahit ano mangyari, ito yung pangahawakan mo. Yung hindi ka madadala, yung hindi ka, ano ba? Yung parang kapar, ano ba? San ba? Alakanang kaliwa. 
Dahil pinangawakan mo yan, tatayuan mo yan. Balik na tayo sa one of the, sabi nga nila, isa sa pinaka, ano bang tawag dito, mahirap na, na sinabi ng ating Panginoong Isus, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers, napaka-specific ng Panginoon, no? Yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Now po, let us be clear na ito po ay isang Hebrew figure of speech. Okay? Kasi, Pastor, paano yung sinabi niya na honor your father and your mother? Okay? Tingnan po natin yung isang version, which is katulad din, din po sa Matthew, medyo ginaangan lang ni Matthew kasi siluk, galit siluk. Eh. Hindi naman galit. Talagang ano siya eh, passionate po. Tingnan natin to. Matthew chapter 10. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me. That was the context, actually. Ma. Hindi hate. Okay? Ito ay pagpapakita lang na dapat ang complete allegiance mo, ang complete devotion mo, ang, ang pinaka buhay mo ay nakaalay sa Panginoon. At kung may magpapantay doon, at kung may aangat doon, hindi ka pwede maging disipulo ng Panginoon. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Not even this ministry, my friends. Hindi pwedeng mas mataas ang mga kabataan. I'm telling you this. Kasi naranasan ko rin ito. Hindi pwedeng mas mataas ang ministry kaysa sa relasyon natin sa Panginoon. Nagmi-ministry ako eh. Para sa Panginoong Panginoon tong ginagawa ko. Hindi ka nga nagugugas ng plato. Hindi ka nga magising. Nagigis niyo ako mga kapatid. If you really want to follow Christ, follow your parents first. <laughs> Hindi, nagmi-ministry ako para sa Panginoon itong ginagawa ko. Kalabang kayo. Kayo ay ginagamit ng demonyo. Di ba? Minsan ganun pa tayo, no? Di ba? Mga parents, di ba? Minsan, parang ganun yung tingin ng mga anak. Di ba? Lalo, walang masama sa pagiging aktibo. Pero hindi ministry ang basihan ng pag, pagsunod natin sa Panginoon. Yan ay ginagamit lang ni Lord. Ang basihan pa rin yung buhay natin mismo tayo ba ay naka-align sa kalooban ng Panginoon? At ito yung katotohanan, kapatid. Hindi lang yung lifestyle mo, hindi lang yung time mo, hindi lang yung possession mo. Alam mo yung nire-require ng Panginoon? Your life. Kaya nga daw yung baka, ababoy at manok eh, nung nakita nila dun oh, please donate. Sabi nung manok, oh, sabi ng manok, tara, dunit tayo. Ito, mangingitlog ako, ibibigay ko dun sa ano. Yung baboy daw, napayo ko eh. Why are you sad? Sabi ng chicken. Oh, English. Ba't kaya malungkot? Kasi pag nag-donate ako, yung mismong buhay ko, yung i-donate ko eh. Buti ka pa, itlog lang. Ako mismo, yung taba ko, yung, yung pata ko. Pero yun yung requirements sa pagsunod ng Panginoon, your very life. Pwede mong sabihin, Lord, binibigay ko sa iyo yung Sunday, 9.30 to 11.30. Pero paano po yung ibang araw? Paano yung mga araw na nandun ka sa trabaho? Ibinibigay mo rin ba yun sa Diyos? Paano pag sa mga araw na nasa bahay ka na? Paano dun sa mga araw na walang nakakakita sa iyo? Binibigay mo pa rin ba yan sa Diyos, mga kapatid? That was the challenge. Very convenient na nandito tayo nagsasama-sama, itataas ang ating mga kamay, magpupuri sa Panginoon. At maganda yun, kasi ito yung ating mountaintop experience, sabi nga ni Pastor Joe. Pero darating at darating ang oras at ang panahon na masusubok ang ating pananampalataya, masusubok ang ating mga buhay sa panahon na wala tayo dito. Ang tanong, willing ka ba na isuko ang buhay mo? doon sa mga area na yun. Kapatid, hindi madali. I'm telling you. Kaya following Christ, kailangan merong resolve. No Lord, no matter what, I will follow. Amen? Tayo tayong lahat. May ask the praise team.
Hayaan niyo po na mag-conclude ako dito sa sinabi ko na, na rin to kanina. God does not want you to just commit your lifestyle, your possessions, and time to Him. God wants you to commit your very life to Him. Kung merong hinihingi sa'yo, si Lord kapatid, hinihingi niya, hinihingi niya mismo ang buhay mo. So if you really want to be a disciple of Christ, give your life to Him. Isuko mo ang buhay mo sa Panginoon. Tulad ko nga sa inyo, ayaw, ayaw po namin sumunod kayo bilang din re- reaction kasi kaya ako sumunod sa Panginoon. Gusto natin out of reflection. I'll give you time. As we sing this song, kaya ba natin sabihin, Panginoon, gamitin mo. Panginoon, binibigay ko ang buhay ko sa iyo. Let us sing this song.
For some of us here, pwedeng ito ay reminder or great reminder ng ating pagsunod sa ating Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. Salamat po. Napapala, napalalahanan ako na ang aking buhay ay dapat nakatoon o inaalay ko sa iyo. But some of us here, ay hindi mo pa naaalay ang Panginoon for whatever reasons. Pwedeng kasi yung buhay ko, wala, tatalikuran ko na, hindi ko kaya. Or you want to rededicate or to recommit your life to God. Let us use this time. Let us use this altar. Ulit ko po yung sinabi ko kanina, wala pong judgment, no? Walang condemnation. But this time, between you and the Lord, kasama po ng ating mga pastors at mga elders, if you want to commit your life to God, kung ano mismo ang sinabi ng Panginoon, supreme devotion, yung allegiance sa Kanya ay sa Kanyang, sa Kanya lang, if you want to ded- rededicate your life to Him, bilang simbolo po, ng pag-commit mo sa buhay mo sa Panginoon, why don't you come right now? And we will pray for you. And we will use this altar para makita natin, para masabi natin sa Panginoon, Lord, I have decided to follow you at ikaw ang mag sa buhay ko. Habang inaawit natin muli ang katang ito, lapit tayo. If you want to dedicate or to recommit your life to God. Sige po. Habang nagpe-pray po dito sa harap, why don't you gather, no? And pray for your family, kung nandyan po ang pamilya nyo. Sige po, gawa tayo ng circle, and let's just pray for one another.
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Salamat, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Tayo po ay manalangin. Sige lang po, tuloy lang po sa ibang mga nanalangin. Panginoon, kami po ay nagpapasalamat for this wonderful reminder. For each and every one of us, that as we commit to build our life in you, the rock of our salvation, our Lord Jesus Christ, ay tulungan mo kami na hindi lang magiging convenient, Panginoon, ng aming buhay. Yes, wala pong masama na maging convenient ang aming buhay. Pero tulungan at samahan mo kami, Panginoon, that in every inconvenience ng aming buhay, we will choose to be committed to you, our Lord Jesus Christ. So help our brothers and sisters, Panginoon. Kung meron pa kaming area ng aming buhay na hindi namin nasusuko sa iyo, ngayon pa lamang po, Panginoon, ay naalay namin sa iyo, Lord. Our lifestyle, our possessions, our time, and yes, Lord, even our life, we surrender it to you, Lord Jesus. Panginoon, ikaw ang maghari sa aming buhay. Patuloy naming maranasan, Panginoon, ang grasya, ang habag mo, Panginoon, na habang kami ay pabalik sa aming mga kanya-kanya mga bahay, sa aming mga trabaho, ay makikita sa amin that we are a committed disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Na ikaw ang nagahari, hindi ang mundong ito, kundi ikaw, Panginoon. Namin na pagdesisyonan that we have decided to follow Jesus and there is no turning back. So we lift up to you, Lord, your word. Your precious word na nabahagi po ngayon, hayaan niyo po na hindi ito manakaw ng kalaban. That in, in the area, Panginoon, na gagamitin mo kami na sa aming mga trabaho, sa aming paralan, sa aming mga employer, sa aming mga pinagtatrabuhan, at kung kami ay mga empleyado, Panginoon, use us, Lord, bilang disipulo mo, Panginoon, na patuloy na tutugon by carrying the cross and by counting the cost. And we will, have, we will have this result that no matter what, anuman ang pag-uyog, anuman ang ginagawa ng kalaban sa aming buhay, ay hindi ito, hindi kami matitinag, Panginoon, bagkos ito ay magiging tuntungan namin para ipakita na kami ang disipulo ni Yeso Cristo. Salamat, Panginoon tinataas ka namin at patuloy namin binibigyan ng karangalan kapurihan, pasalamat ang iyong pangalan Panginoon, ikaw ang patuloy na magari sa aming buhay ito po ang aming panalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus ikaw ang magari sa buhay ko pusong dali
Here are the ways you can give. You can drop your tithes and offering at Lighthouse Center, Monday to Sunday at 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can also send your tithes and offering through digital giving. Union Bank. Metro Bank. Banco de Oro. And RCBC. If you are outside the Philippines, please send your donations through Remitly, Zoom, or Western Union using the following details. Banco de Oro. And PayPal. For confirmation, please send a screenshot of your transfer to lighthouse.alabang at gmail.com. The Lord bless you for being a faithful tither and a generous giver.